The global financial environment has deteriorated due to a combination of factors. Coming out of the pandemic shock, the persisting war in Europe and rising tension in the Pacific over Taiwan have disrupted supply chains leading to energy insecurities, high input costs, and steep inflation. With the United States weaponizing the dollar to deal with Russia, that currency has since hardened, causing an average appreciation of 8% against a basket of world currencies. The Indian rupee has suffered a loss of only 4.7% because of the resiliency of the Indian economy and nuanced currency action by the RBI. Sadly, these developments have caused a tailspin effect on most economies, resulting in a meltdown in some conditions. Emerging market economies like India have to dance delicately. They must balance growth aspirations with inflation risks while dealing with capital outflow, currency depreciation, tightening fiscal environment, and reserve losses. Simultaneously, Western sanctions on Russia have affected the energy, fertilizer, and food sectors. These challenges further push up inflation in core areas of livelihood like food and housing. India is in a much better shape than most nations to deal with these global developments. Considering its size as the fifth largest economy in the world, India has a very low debt to GDP ratio. It has the world's fourth largest foreign currency reserve, enough to accommodate one year's worth of imports. While its current account balance is not favorable as Germany, Japan, or China, it is now as bad as those of the United States of America or the United Kingdom. Foreign direct investment grew to $13.6 billion from $11.6 billion last year. Although foreign portfolio investment did see an exodus, there was net inflow in July. Consumer price index numbers also reduced to 7% from 7.8%, even though rural and urban consumption levels remained stored. Some political statements claim that these positive indicators resulting in increased general services tax or GST collections were due to inflation. However, State Bank of India Chief Economist Soumya Kanti Ghosh rubbished such claims. He published a report with inflation-adjusted numbers showing GST collections at 1.2 lakh crore rupees because of consumption increase. His calculation showed a 26% surge in inflation-adjusted GST from the pre-COVID level of 95,000 crore rupees and has been above 1.4 lakh crore rupees for five consecutive months. Tax revenue has been robust with record high GST revenues, which have been possible because of increased compliance and higher economic activity. In his estimation, these additional tax revenues from higher consumption levels, GDP expansion, and windfall gains will keep the fiscal deficit at 6.5%. However, the trade deficit numbers are a cause for worry. While merchandise exports grew in the first fiscal quarter, imports surged dramatically, resulting in a trade deficit of $100 billion. Gosh dismissed concerns over the trade deficit. He observed that the current trade deficit is at 8.5% of the GDP, which peaked at 10.7% in fiscal year 13. This quarter's current account deficit was caused by a decline in exports of $5 billion in July while imports remained steady. If you like this content, please press the like button and share it with your family and friends. Please consider subscribing to this channel. It is free. Press the bell icon to receive notifications about new content.